Hi, today I wanted to review and give a few tips about the painter's color, color diary. The painter's color diary comes in different sizes. I'm going to talk to you today about the travel one, which is the six by eight. And I'll just tell you right now, I think I'm in love with this thing. Um, here's what it looks like when you buy it. And um, the 9 by 12 is also very nice. By the way, thank you, Marilyn, for showing me your 9 by 12. Um, it comes with this example of how to use it. And I'm going to pop it back on. Um, it's very easy to pull off. And it explains, hey, you could do the title of your sheet and you could do uh, anything, brands, the type of things you keep for travel, whatever you want to do. Uh, it's patent pending. Someone was very creative and this is going to really help you organize your paints. I just think it's a lovely idea. And before I get started, do you mind if I remind you to subscribe? And then if you want, also hit the bell that lets you know when more uh, new little short uh, tutorials, I guess you'd say, or reviews or whatever are posted. I know that gets to be annoying. Everybody asks you to do it, but I have a fairly new channel and I'm working hard to provide a service and the only way to really get your channel out there is to have subscriptions. So now I get it. I'm glad I subscribe to everybody to help them. And I hope you'll do the honors for me as well. Now, the price of this Painter's Color Diary, and like I said, it looks like this when you get it, but you're supposed to remove this. I may not, or I may, I haven't decided yet. Just got it. Um... The price of this is great. At this time, uh, as I'm recording this, this one, the six by eight small one, they're calling it the travel one, is under $12. And um, the nine by 12, which is nine by 12 and has bigger little squares, um, also very nice. That one is uh, $19.78, so under $20. What's nice is it's 100% cotton, the sheets, and it's spiral, meaning you can lay it flat, you can bend it over. Um, I mean, what a great way to organize in one little book all your little loose sheets. So let me take you through it and give you a couple hints. Um, every sheet that has all of these different pages and squares, rectangles. Everyone has a sheer tissue sheet on top of it. Now the purpose of that is to keep the colors pure and not rubbing over there, but also you could write on this anything you want on top. And speaking of writing, I'm gonna suggest you use a Micron or other brand style black waterproof pen. And this way you're not gonna have anything blurring because it is watercolor after all. I started with one and I decided each sheet is gonna be a different brand. Now, if I have a million colors in one brand, I'll probably give that two sheets. So I'm starting with my, I'm not gonna say my smallest collection, but definitely a smaller amount of paints per brand. So that towards the end, I'll see if I need two sheets as I get used to it. What do we have? One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. So we have 36 colors per sheet, which ain't chopped liver, right? And what I did is I already put the title. And by the way, I realized I spelled it wrong. My very first sheet for crying out loud. And I'm not going to correct it. Because sometimes, just like with paintings, when you overfix something, it makes it look even worse, right? So Roman Schmal is spelled with one L. Here, I'll put my finger over it. And uh, this is one of my favorite paints. Um, the colors are so rich, uh, lots of pigments. It really works well. The colors are beautiful. And um, I decided to put them, this is my introduction to Roman Schmal. 
I got it at Jackson's Art Supplies. And um, this is the Aquarius collection. And I have just used so much of this and I ordered three other collections from him. Um, in fact, I could even put Aquarius here if I wanted to really isolate. But with 36, I think I'm okay. It might be what I have. I'm not sure. I'll have to check. Um, I have them in order. These are pre-poured. A lot of times I don't like the squares because I don't want, um, you know, somebody to pour out um, with extra waxy products, pour out a sheet and cut them up, which they do with the cheaper um, paints. But if you're at a professional level with a high quality like this, you certainly can trust that Daniel Smith always reminds us, hey, the pre-poured paint in the squares is the exact same formula that you get in the tubes. So it's good to not get overly worried and overly prejudiced against certain papers, certain styles, whatever, right? Um, it's easy to get elitist almost with watercolor. And we don't want to be purist and we don't want to be that way. We want to keep an open mind, don't we? So it's laid out in, in four layers. There's 12 colors here. And so I decided not to go all the way across at the, in the six rectangles. I decided to keep it in the way it's laid out. And there's samples on the back, but I've never really done a sheet like this. Now, the way it's laid out is you do the least amount of water, so most heavily pigmented, um, brightest, densest color in the little square, or I keep saying square, but you know what I'm saying, the rectangle shape uh, on the left side. So each time you see this whole rectangle is one color. I'll do just this to show you clearly what I mean. This rectangle divided in thirds is for one color. The one on the left, the smallest piece of the rectangle is where you put the true pigmented shade. And then the one on the right of this division line, you're gonna put water down all the way to really faint. And this way, you know, a lot of colors really can change when you get lighter. And so you want to remind yourself of that too. So I already did the lemon yellow one for you. So there, and I'm not a perfectionist. Don't you be either. Let's relax and enjoy the process, right? Um, I did it very pigmented. And by the way, my yellows and some of my other colors will get... Um, just kind of other colors mixed in, kind of polluted, I was going to say. So I actually cleaned that first. And if you don't know how to clean, you just take a damp brush, go to the top and tap it off, you know, just pull it off slightly. There it is this morning. And this way you're getting the clean product. So I like a square brush when I'm doing swatches. I'm using today a silver black velvet, quarter inch, this is the 3008S series um, flat brush. And since we're doing um, geometric sharp shapes, why not use a brush that fits that? So I'm going in to cadmium yellow. This is such a wonderful cadmium yellow. You'll notice I'm not using tons of water and I'm not gonna do all of them, maybe one more and that's it because you'll have the idea. I don't like it for some reason. It's like a little pet peeve of mine. When I see people, either my students live or people on YouTube, artists that sit there and do exactly what I'm doing, where they take water and they work it, work it, work it, work it, work it. It gives the impression to everyone watching that you have to do that each time you paint. And many times, one little dip is all you need and you're ready to go. However, when I do swatches, I do that annoying thing because <laughs> I want it really rich. So there is my cadmium yellow. What a beautiful shade. Let me go to the side because um, my it still looks a little oranger than it normally does. Um, it's early morning. I'm even in my nightgown painting. <laughs> um, so I don't have a lot of light. The sun's just barely been up. But um, I wanted you to see 
what a beautiful rich color it's it, it is orangey for sure but it's not quite so burnt sienna ish so i'm now dipping my brush in my water and i'm gonna sit it in there a tiny bit you can see it going in and then i'm doing that again because i really put a lot of pigment and then I'm tapping off the excess water on the base of my brush, which is where the water gathers the most. And now I'm putting a little bit on the side that way. And then I'm going in and almost washing it completely. So I'm, I'm um, pressing my brush on the edge to see if I've got it. I don't want it quite clear water, but I do want it very, very light, okay? So now I'm going to rinse once more, take off excess, and I like to do them not touching at first, and then I touch. And I think I could and will make this part just a tiny, tiny bit lighter, just so I can really get the feel. So let me do one more just to show you. I think while you're swatching, you may as well really get the full spectrum. What do you think? So this is next the cadmium red. I love the cadmium yellow. And this, by the way, is cadmium yellow deep, but I use it for anything I would use with cadmium. So I'm in there. I'm doing the thing. Scrubbing, scrubbing. I'm not going to quite go as crazy as before. And there's my cadmium red. Ooh, that's so pretty. Isn't it so rich? And you remember the routine. I'm Because this is such a dark, rich color, I'm not going to go to a clean water. But if I were going to really, if I did opposite, for example, instead of going light to dark, um, I would definitely switch waters because I don't want the water shade to pollute the color either. So I just rinsed a certain amount off. I'm tapping to make it a little bit richer. I'm rinsing more. I'm gonna to go to almost clear. And I'm playing with my paper in hand. And here we go. I don't need it smooth as silk or beautiful. In fact, I prefer to show a little bit of texture with it because then it's really gonna show me the different shades. So now I'm attaching and pulling between the two. And sometimes you gotta work on it and sometimes it just happens very easily. I'm gonna put just a tiny, tiny bit more of that medium color so that you truly can see it graduating from um, the medium amount. I'm just tapping it in because I don't want to start pulling. There, that that's good. That'll give me a real clear look of what we're looking at here. So I'm not going to go through the entire paper. You've got the idea of how to do it, how I would recommend it. And like I said before, if you want to, you can go like this. And I'm not going to do it quite well. <laughs> I was going to say I wait till it dried, but of course I did it already. So let's see. Let's just see if I can wipe this lightly and then let it dry there. Slightly. I don't care if it's got a little on it. And there's a little yellow too. <laughs> you know, I got a brand new book and here I am messing it up already. Well, messy is good sometimes, right? So there you go. I am going to put my hand so you can remember it goes over that. This is what the top looks. I'm gonna um, give you the links to this so that you can take a look. I'm not affiliated with anybody, but I want you to be able to easily find it on Amazon, which is where I bought it and where the prices are um, today, this morning. You never know when they switch, but that's what they are today. I really like this. It's a nice size. It's got... Um, just a lot of pages. How many pages are there, you ask? 10, feels like even more. I thought it was 10 and I thought, no, I don't think so. But it is 10, 10 pages of a lot, right? 36 uh, rectangles each, 36 colors per page. So there you go. I like it. I give it a big two thumbs up and a big smile with us. 
And I hope it's helpful to you as you familiarize yourself with different brands and different colors that you may own, whether you're a beginner and just starting out and have one page only filled a tiny little bit, um, or if you're somebody like me that is uh, color curious, so I'm always buying, and brand curious, I'm always buying and trying, and now I can keep tabs on what's going on. Have a good day. God bless you.